ask you to rest on your feet, if you will, and honor the Lord in the reading of his word. St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right. And we'll read together. If I drop out as I custom, you continue on to the completion at the end of that discourse of verses in six, verse 6. All right, ready, read. In the, day, day, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. Uh huh. For our subject on today, we're going to go back and take our reference scripture from verse number one, where it says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And the Lord told me to prophesy and to speak into your hearts on this Resurrection Sunday that it is the dawning of a new day. <laughs> I dare you to testify to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I don't know what you've been going through, but I came to declare to you that it is the dawning of a brand new day. Ah, glory. A new day, a new day, a new day is about to break. I know it's been hard. Uh-huh. I know we've been going through some trying times. I know you've had some suffering. I know it's been some pressure. But the Lord told me to let you know that the dark is out. It's just before the breaking of a new day. And it's about to have a break, a day break. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence. It's the dawning. A new day is coming. A new day is coming. I say a new day is coming. I know it's been rough. I know it's been tough. Oh, but it's a new day. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's a brand new day on the way. And that's enough to be glad about. That's enough to be excited about. Amen. That's enough to give God a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. But to keep it in context, we do have to, amen, put the text in context. Amen. To understand that uh, preceding every new day, there is a yesterday. There is a 
time in the past. And if you would, I would love to just expound upon the passion of our Lord and Savior for us to understand that we we celebrate this resurrection and we celebrate amen all that he uh, has done and is doing uh, but he went through something and uh, that's what makes this uh, dawning of a new day so significant, even in your life, because, amen, it is the pressure, it is the pain, it is the sacrifice and the suffering that you have already been through, that you've already been going through, and so it is with our Lord and Savior. And it's true that everybody, even the super saints, <laughs> everybody's got a yesterday. Uh-huh. I say everybody. I don't care how many souls you've gotten saved. I don't care how many demons you cast out, honey. You you got a yesterday. You got a you got a yesterday. And and just as the masters, amen, yesterday wasn't pretty, so ours, amen, uh, is not something that you can brag about a lot of times. And so it was with Jesus. Uh, his yesterday was wrought with pain. His yesterday was wrought with with suffering and danger, amen, and, and even betrayal, amen. And we oftentimes talk about uh, the Lord's uh, physical suffering and him being, amen, beaten, amen, nailed to the cross and, and, and stretched wide and hung high, but we don't a lot of times take into account the suffering that he went through when you had somebody that you poured into for years and to find out that it was just that person, that one. See, it wouldn't hurt so bad if you hadn't allowed them to get into the inner circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can deal with something when you look at person from afar off. But when you allow them to get into your inner circle and when you allow them to be over to the house for uh, special uh, ceremonies and you allow them to come to Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner and you allow them to be around at your children's graduation day. And then that same person is the one that portrays you. See, we, we don't take a lot of time to really consider the emotional pain. Before they plucked out his beard, before he was buffeted and before he was taken, amen, to Pilate's judgment hall. It started from within. Yesterday, he had to deal with betrayal. Yesterday, he had to deal with one of the very ones that he had uh, put into a position that nobody else had. We don't even think about it, but Jesus wasn't even, amen, uh, called or looked on as what we call uh, the bishop or the senior pastor. 
He didn't, he didn't carry no title. It was, it was so, uh, uh, up, he was so obscure that they had to have somebody to even point out who he was. If they didn't have one of them that was walking close with him, they wouldn't knew because he was obscure. He didn't make no big name for himself. Ooh, boy, I tell you, if I, if I could get a church like that. <laughs> Pastor, you ain't got to give me no uh, 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 congratulations. You, you ain't got to call my name. You, you ain't got to put me on program now. Just let me help out. Just let me serve. Let me uh, uh, do what I do in the background. Coming up you know, on I, the ladder that's, right. That's how the, the devil is. That's how folks... They're going to try to do everything they can to pull you down, to hold you captive to whatever your past may have been. Bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, yes, we're so glad that you have chosen to join us this morning on another outpouring of God's Spirit on the latter rain. Well, listen, we want to invite you now to join us on our online uh, platform. That's www.elvm.org where you can re request one of our ministry materials, whether it be a CD or a DVD, however it is that you would want to uh, connect with us. We would love to hear from you. And we listen, we want you to know that God has a special miracle and a special blessing just for you. This is our year of great awakenings. This is our year of God outpouring new blessings into the lives of his believers. So listen, if you would, just go to our website again, www.elvm.org and request either a CD or DVD of one of my messages or either one of the archive messages of our founder, Apostle Isaiah Revels. Please drop us a note and let us know how you've been enjoying the program thus far. We'll love to hear from you. And remember, God bless you and we love you. Out of all the other Apostles, Peter, James, John, Mark, Luke. None of them held the title. None of them held a position save one, Judas. Had the title, McClark as treasurer. The only one in the organization that had a title. Only one that carried a particular designation, if you will, known as the money keeper. You got to be careful sometimes what you ask for. Because that same position is what caused old Judas to get besides himself to the point that he said, you know what? It ain't enough that I'm skimming a little bit off the top. But if you give me 30 pieces of silver, give me a, give me a little money. I'll tell you who he is. I'll betray the innocent blood just for some money. And that's the reason why the Bible still bears witness that the love of money. I say it again, the love of money is the root of all evil. Nevertheless, Judas betrayed him, and you know it, it just caught my 
attention that of all things, and I, I guess I never really looked at it to this level of depth, but as the word uh, begins to go into how Judas betrayed our Savior, uh, it said that he let the, amen, the high council know that I'm going to uh, designate him with a blistering kiss. Why not just point him out? Huh? Why, why not just say, okay, there you go over there. I, I, I ain't got to point, point him out to you, but he's the one that got on such and such a color. He got his sandals tied like that. He got a certain wrapper going around his head. But it shows you just how Satan is. It ain't enough for him to just betray him and point him out. I'm going to do it in such a way that it would otherwise seem as if though I'm showing you love. Oh, isn't that the devil? Yeah, he will make you feel like he loves you. While you out there on his territory, he'll make you feel like you having fun, you having a ball, you doing the time of your life. But he's not going to tell you that the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He don't want you to wake up and recognize that this downward road is crowded. It's a, it's a lot of times you... Amen. On this Christian journey, you may not find a whole lot of encouragement. You may not find a whole lot of friends, but going down that road that leads to destruction, oh, it's always a party. It's always a good time. And so it was with our Savior. He was taken away after being betrayed. And I can only imagine the desperation of his heart being broken and torn. And, and, and somebody said, well, I thought he was Jesus. He know, yeah, but still just to, to, to have it lived out because uh, he, he knew before he came, but even being flesh and blood, he asked his father. Yeah. If yeah. it be possible. Yeah. If it's another way. Father, let this, I don't want to have to go through this now. If it's another way, let me pass this cup. I, I don't want to have to feel the agony and the pain of, of feeling one of my close ones. Betray me. Walk all over me with a, a kiss. But for the fulfillment of the scripture, the Bible declared that he was taken away to Caiaphas and the high priest condemned him and said that you are a blasphemer and you calling yourself out your name. You ain't no son of God. Uh, who, who, who are you supposed to be? We know where you come from. Matter of fact, we even got questions, amen, of whether or not your mama was really faithful. But we know, we know about your story, see, you understand. You may go to some of those other areas up in, in Capernaum and, and over in uh, 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 Judea and some of the other places. But see, right around here, we know you. Yeah. Dang, we, ain't, we ain't done our homework. You know, how, that's, that's how the, the devil is. That's how folks, they're going to try to do everything they can to pull you down. To hold you captive to whatever your past may have been. So Caiaphas said, no, we already done passed judgment. Send him on to Pilate's judgment chamber. So a lot of things can happen in you yesterday that you be... Really questioning, God, have you forgotten about me? 
oh, I, I, I just don't see how in the world can I be really going through all this. They calling me out my name. They treat me bad. I, I really feel like, I mean, hey, I, I, I may have had a, a few issues, but I ain't did enough to deserve all this. But as he went before old Pilate, Pilate, amen, being the one that he had to go to so that he can give a testimony. And uh, testimony to Pilate representing the fact that Pilate said, you know, I want to know uh, 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 who is this that they saying that, you know, you, you are uh, the Messiah. You, you, you are uh, the Savior. You claiming to be somebody. And Jesus just said, thou hast said. You know, in other words, I ain't got to speak. You know, Pilate, you already done, done spoke it, you know. And one thing about it, we sometimes get in trouble for just talking too much. Sometimes God puts us in a position that he wants us to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And so, Pilate, after coming into contact and interaction with Jesus, he said, I, I ain't finding no fault in this man. I, I hear what, what, what Ocaiph is saying, but then I, I'm not here in a, in a ca capacity to to judge, you know, in a, a religious matter. I'm, I'm here from a political standpoint. So I'm going to send you on to King Herod. Let, let Herod deal with you. You know, and Herod got him over there, and Herod was trying to get him to work miracles and magic and do all this stuff, and Jesus wouldn't succumb to it. So Herod said, well, man, I ain't got nothing else to do with you either. You won't do what I told you to do. Go back to Pilate. All this happened in his yesterday. And so, as Pilate saw Jesus again, he said, well, what I'm going to do, hallelujah, is I'm going to exonerate myself. I'm going to wash my hands of the innocent blood because I see what y'all trying to do. I, you know, I'm a Roman, so I know about treachery. Yeah, you know, I know about trying to do stuff uh, clandestine and, and behind the, the closed doors. So I understand what y'all, but you won't do it on my bill because I'm just going to wash my hands. Now what I will do, since y'all said he was a troublemaker, I'm going to let him go ahead and give him a good whipping. And then I'm going to be done with this situation. I'll let you all, since you want to do so much, I'll do what you want to do. But I began to question and wonder how still could Pilate do my Lord so wrong. You have already admitted that you know that he's innocent. You've already acknowledged that he hadn't done any wrong. You've already acknowledged that you see the treachery. So much and so that you wash your hands of the situation. Mm -hmm. But as I begin to understand that according to how the, the Romans adjudicated things, uh, uh, if you got a whipping, it wasn't for nothing. If they put you on a whipping post, it still meant that there was something that had been done wrong. It may not have been enough for you to get locked up. It may not have been enough for you to get hung up. 
but we're going to beat you because you did enough to get a beating. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, God bless you now. We're here at a closing of another program, but before we end our program on this morning, I would like to uh, ask you if you would join me in just a word of prayer. There may be somebody in our viewing audience that does not know Christ, that does not know Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. If that's you, well, my sister, my brother, I would not want to close out this power pack uh, uh, broadcast without offering you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. If that's you, just bow your head with me in an act of agreement and say these words with me. Lord Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for my sins. But I also believe that you rose again on the third day. And because you live, I can live. Because you rose, I can rise. Thank you, Lord, for a new life in victory. Now, Jesus, I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Fill me now with the precious Holy Ghost, and I'll live for you for the rest of my life. As I often say, the most important thing now for you is just to believe and also connect up with the church. Connect with the ministry. If you can, come here to our uh, church here on 1506 South Slappy Boulevard in the good life city of Albany, Georgia. But if you're not able to, find a full gospel Bible-believing church in your local area and become a faithful member because you need help at this point to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you here. If not, just keep believing God, have faith, and connect up with that church in your area. God bless you now. We love you. Thank you for tuning into Latter Rain. We hope you have enjoyed the word this morning. To order a copy of this message in its entirety, please visit our online store at www.efvm.org or call 229-436-7707. To partner with us on our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, please make a donation by clicking the Give link on our website or through the Givelify app. Once again, we thank you for tuning into Ladder Rain. Join us next week as we experience the outpour, the overflow, the Ladder Rain.